that's a wrap on day one of the competition here at the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games. We had Invictus athletes doing great across the board in both the individual and the team side of the competition. Let's take a look at what they did throughout the day on the team side of things. Currently, after day one, we are seeing Invictus X in 10th place, Invictus Boston in 5th, and the Invictus team in 4th place. On the ladies' individual side, Kristen Polte is currently sitting in 4th place. She took a 7th place finish in Event 1 and a 6th place finish in Event 2. And Camilla salmonson hellman also had a great day. She took 8th place in the second workout. On the men's side, both Eric Carmody and Connor Nellens had a great day. We'll be seeing them move ahead in day two of the competition. And remember that most of the events are still unknown to all the athletes. Never did it for the fame, never did it for the game When I picked up the mic, it made my whole world change Started back in my bedroom with a double cassette Had nothing to prove, no records to press Never followed the trend, I just kept pursuing to be original Not copy what everyone else is doing Large in the charge, against all odds I don't bite, and call that hand on March I'm still doing it, plugging my mic, sound check It's gonna be another great night, come correct Got heritage, whatever kid, I'm not worth for hire And through it all, I never lost Lost my desire, no regrets. Part of me for being such a dreamer. All these memories keep giving me. So first day CrossFit Games. Um, so uh, the teams know their first workout. Really fired up about it. Um, it's a fun first event. All three teams should do really, really well. Um, they're prepared, and I'm just excited to see them kind of get get the ball rolling and get started. Talk a little bit. Um, I know Ras has been saying that uh, his back. It hasn't been or isn't an issue, but it clearly has been an issue the last few days of training camp. Are you concerned at all? No, um, Rasmus, he's a competitor, so I know that he would never put himself, his, himself or his team in jeopardy. So I'm confident that he's going to he's going to execute perfectly. Like he's he's such a he, like I said, he's a competitor, and when he steps out onto that competition floor, he's always going to give 100. percent Well, what would you say percentage-wise he is? Would he be like 70? percent Honestly. The one thing I've learned about Rasmus is you never bet against him. So if I was to I'd do him and myself an injustice, if I was to say that he's coming in at 70%, because I know he's always going to give 100%. And CJ and I used to joke, and when the Open came around, there'd be a workout that we thought that he'd get destroyed at, and he'd always be the one that came out on top. So I have 100% confidence in him. A lot of people don't know you're kind of a mad scientist, crunching numbers, coming up with training programs, etc. So, as a man that kind of knows their stats and numbers, like, let's be honest for a second, out of the three teams that we have, who do you think has the best shot of taking a podium or, or position or doing, doing the best for Invictus? It, it really depends on the workouts. Like, taking workout one, for example, like, I think that everyone's going to do really well, but on paper, you look at Boston and you just look at weight, um, in terms of like uh, the two males are big strong guys and then you've got a female who's as strong if not stronger than some of the males in other teams so if you take that event into consideration you'd think that Boston would, would uh, be on top out of those three teams but in saying that like all three teams are well balanced and I think it just really depends on what workouts come up across the weekend will determine uh, the placing of the, the three Invictus teams. We have three teams competing this weekend. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, the possibilities of one of those teams getting on podium? Um, we would like all three of those teams to be on the podium. Um, and look, I mean, day the last day, there's five teams competing. Our goal is very simple. We want three of those five teams uh, to be Invictus teams. And, uh, and that's the goal. And they're all capable. Uh, they need to communicate, they need to keep it together, they need to ride the ups and downs of the, of the weekend, but uh, they're all very capable of doing so. Josh, day one, um, event one's coming up, uh, what's the thoughts? Uh, solid workout for the guys, I think across the board. Um, it's a long push, you know, with that big bobsled, uh, four times the amount that they had to do last year. Um, so I think bigger teams are, you know, going to fare pretty well on this. 
um, and so we're going to see what happens. But uh, I think it's a great start across the board for for all team, all Invictus teams. It's a late change to Invictus Boston. You lost one of your uh, athletes, decided to go individual last moment. Um, not the ideal way to come into games, but with that replacement, do you think um, you guys still have a chance to podium? Uh, definitely. Uh, bring in an alternate and Caitlin. Uh, she's amazing. Um, there wasn't a ton of coaching that had to go into that as, you know, she's really experienced on the worm. Uh, she's got great gymnastics, which is a great supplement to, to what we needed. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that we got an opportunity, uh, especially with workouts like this with the Big Bob, to really take advantage. Um, and, um, you know, she brings some other really great components, running, swimming. She's, she's great at that. So, I, you know, depends on programming, but um, I think we got a real shot this weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day one of competition for our team. Expect the unexpected this year at the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games. Team competition, Gary, to kick off. Folks here from Invictus, three teams out of the field. Cuts are coming. Big things happening this weekend. Don't miss it. Stay right here. Jared. Now, uh, Jared, second event of the day for the teams is coming up. There's, there's a movement in there that you might know a little bit about. Sometimes. <laughs> uh, what is it? It's a clean and jerk? Yeah, max clean and jerk. So yeah, event two is the, look like thrusters with the worm and rope climbs, and then rest two minutes and you go straight into the uh, max clean and jerk. Um, yeah, I'm excited to watch that one. I think there's going to be some big clean jerks. What do you think? Um, we've got three teams in there. Um, yeah. From your knowledge of those teams and that, the weightlifting background, um, what, are you, what are you thinking? Who do you think could uh, maybe like clinch that one? That's a tough question. I think maybe the with Tola and Craig and Kelsey and uh, Caitlin. I think that team's got a good chance. I mean, you got some strong clean jerkers in there. Tola can power clean a house. Craig's strong. But... Then you never know because every team has strong athletes on it. You got Tommy, Rasmus, Lauren, um, and Reagan. I mean, that's a strong team. And then you, on the other side, you got Sam Holden, like Margo and Christy, who are so experienced too, to know like they're going to recover fast going into the clean and jerk. I don't know. I think it's a strong event for all of them. Um, I definitely, I don't know. That's a tough one. I don't know who I'd put my money on. I don't even want to pick. <laughs> I mean, here's a good question for you. A lot of people um, in the weightlifting community say that, that you shouldn't do like these heavy late weightlifting events, clean and jerk, snatch, after doing um, some cardiovascular movements, right? You shouldn't couple it. Like, what's your thought on that? I think it's a, it's a made up principle. Like, yeah, it's snatch and clean and jerk is a sport of weightlifting, but what if it was the thruster? What if for some reason the thruster out of Iraq was, was weightlifting? Well, then would it be okay to do snatches then? Like, we can do thrusters for time, or we can do, and I get it, there's more of a pull and a turnover, and it's explosive, but it's like, it's kind of just made up that the way that the community says, oh, you shouldn't do them for time or for reps. Why not? Well, I mean, why not? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no reason. Um, and at this point, if it was that unsafe, you would see a ton of injuries, and you see people all over the place, and they're just... You don't see any more injuries on that than you do any other movement in CrossFit. So I think it's fine, especially at this level, with this level of athlete. You know, this isn't your run of the mill doing it, like in a CrossFit gym. Um, it's where it might be a little bit dangerous for them to go under a max weight after fatiguing their grip, for example, or their legs. But for these experienced athletes, it's no problem. Here's a, thought, a question for you again. Like, it seems like the people that do really well at CrossFit, with all the, the movements, it's not endurance, it's not gymnastics, it seems to be people that come from a weightlifting background. Like, like Matt came in before, like uh, Fraser, you know, he had a weightlifting background. A lot of the people that are doing well in the sport, is, do you think there's a reason for that? Like, well, yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of sports that have transfer. You know, there's a lot of, in the female side, a lot of gymnasts, 
even on the male side, there's some gymnasts, or at least um, athletes who have done body wear in a sports, wrestling, football, just something where you're moving in space and, and controlling your own body weight. And specifically to weightlifting, it's just the, the skill transfer, you know? It's a skill acquisition, Like right? If you can master two movements that are that technical, and there's so many moving parts and you're that mobile, like you already nailed the mobility, the flexibility, the explosiveness, and the strength. So it's like you hit all those movements already. So if you have a dumbbell overhead squat, one arm, or if you have a lunge or you need to kip, it's like your shoulders are already loose already. They're already mobile. You have the strength, you have the capacity in terms of just skills that now you just need to get the endurance, right? Like you've hit a lot of the modalities already from that. Or if you come from a running background or an endurance background, you don't have skill acquisition. You have the engine, you have the motor, which is awesome. I want it, but you don't have that skill acquisition or that mobility maybe that you're coming, you're getting from another sport. A couple of final questions. Uh, from your opinion, who do you think is the best male and female Olympic weightlifter at the CrossFit Games? Oh boy, I think male, it's hard to, it's hard to argue with Fraser. Just in terms of his quality of movement, I think Ben Smith also. Fraser and Ben Smith are, when you look at their history of what they do for 1RMs plus what they do in like open workouts, whether it's the 17-3, the snatch chest bar ladder, or the uh, clean toe-to-bar double under ladder, also froning, you can throw froning in that mix too, like in terms of how they Actually, move. that's a good question. Who, who do you think technically was better, froning or Fraser? From a technique standpoint, I don't know, maybe Fraser. But they're about the same, like they lift the same weight. So it's like, what is technique, you know? Like they lift, they lift about the same weight. So I don't know. I mean, I, I would say Fraser's snatch is a little bit better, um, but I like Froning's arm bend on his snatch. I think it's like dirty, it's rugged, I like it. So I'm a fan of both of them. Like I don't want to say anything bad because I like both their technique. They both lift a ton, like they're both great weight lifters. But those three are probably my, if there's like a barbell movement in the workout that's pretty heavy, I'll pick those guys. Fraser, Ben Smith, and Froning, I know he's on team, but he's fun to talk about because he's, his technique is a little bit more rugged. When Sam Dancer came to Invictus, he was horrible at Olympic weightlifting. He's, he's so strong, though. <laughs> you, think so you, strong. you think he still needs a little bit of your help? Um, I don't know. Sam is, Sam is a smart guy. Like, he, I don't know from a raw strength standpoint, I don't think there's anybody in CrossFit stronger. I really don't. Like, you talk about a press, a squat, a one-legged squat, anything. There, I don't think there's anybody stronger in, in, in CrossFit than Sam Dancer. So it's like, I don't know. You know, if him, if him focusing more on weightlifting, does that take away from some of his other areas? Maybe. You know, you don't know from some of his endurance or just time, being able to stay healthy. Um, are there a few things, yeah, where it's like, I see him snatch or something, and I'm like, I would make a few small tweaks, of course, but just like he would make with me if I, in terms of my warm-up or my – um, me, my pacing in a workout, right? Like he's so experienced, he could teach me a lot more than I could teach him. But there is a few technique things that I, I do watch him. I'm like, oh, I wish you could, you know, try this a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's the answer. You got a minute? Uh, yeah, I think so. How'd you guys go? Uh, it was a rough kind of first event. Uh, we got a lot of no reps. A lot. Well, do you know what you place now? Uh, we are going to go appeal some. Well, Holden's going to go appeal our placing so we do not know. where are you currently sitting with the placing that's taken? um 12 we think we should be in tied for, tied for ninth okay um so sam is your bag oh happy with yeah. it or not i mean there's nothing you can do about that it's oh, judgment call appealing? no we're sam? we're going to hmm? we're, they are the they, score they put our score wrong oh so we're going to Oh, okay. They yeah. put, like they. What, what do you mean? They they actually they gave us what, the wrong score. What you signed off on? Yeah. Oh okay. uh, no, I don't know. The score changed from what we signed off on, so we're gonna go figure that out right now. That's what we're doing. We're not like appealing the like it's a judge's call. You can't appeal that. Well, our overall though, how are you guys feeling? Like yeah, Fine. kind of it was emotionally, one event. spiritually. Good. We're excited for the next event. Yeah. One event. Two. We get to go finally not snatch for once. Yeah. Clean and check. Oh. Yeah. You made the first cut? Yeah. Excited, obviously. I'm gonna go eat some food. That's how excited I am. No, nah, it's two reps short. Ah, that's pretty good. I'm impressed you could snatch 185. <laughs> Bye, thank you, baby. Thanks, Alan. Are you sore at all after that? No. No? I don't think so. 
might be a little sore after a bunch of thrusters. Yeah, what's the uh, that next event? It's uh, uh, 42, 30, 18 thruster, 7, <laughs> seven five three thruster. Is it seven five three thruster? Seven five three thruster, that would be nice. Or seven five three rope it's climb. Seven five three rope climb. Men behind the bleachers prior to your briefing. So Ronnie, what did I just miss? Uh, we just saw the in first individual cut for the men. Well, I, like, I heard it was brutal. Tell me what, what took place. It was kind of like a X Factor audition meets the Bachelor Rose ceremony. So they were sitting on the bleachers and then there was a, like a panel. And then one by one from 1 through to 75 they called out the qualifiers who got through to the next cut. And they had to get out of their seat in the bleachers and then stand and, and look back at the remaining people kind of like the bachelor so they had to accept their rows and then stand there and then that was just for the individuals though yeah that was just for the individuals so i'm sure team cuts are coming but um that was that was brutal how did you guys do on that last one get away from <laughs> me uh we did pretty well we i mean we were doing really well in terms of i have to check over my shoulder these Thank australian God. guys uh we did pretty well um up until the third round and then we had a little bit of miscommunication on the toto bar and teams of four synchros kind of that doesn't happen very often so it's um that sort of, I think, threw a curveball in there for that event. So we're right on the cusp. I don't know when the, they haven't given us information around when the cuts are, but uh, we got to do some work to make sure that we're safe tonight. So hopefully we are. Well, when we saw you in China, you only had one Invictus team to beat. Now you've got three Invictus teams to beat. Currently, we're ahead of two of them. So you are. Yeah, at the moment. Well, interesting, Swanny. How, how is the team bonding and uh, and going with you guys? Like, what's the uh, like any injuries or anything you want to tell me about? Uh, if I had injuries, I wouldn't want to tell you about them. Uh, <laughs> no, I think we're good, man. We, we honestly like we're just we're here to, for me personally as well. Uh, you know, it's been a long time between drinks at the game, so I'm just happy to be here and I want to soak up the experience. But um, we're here to enjoy ourselves and try our best first and foremost, and hopefully that will result in a, a long and fruitful weekend. It was damn hard. I don't think it's the worst line, worse to come, but it was fun. We did well. Happy? Yeah. Way better. It's better than what, you, what we got in the first event, so I think for us it's just keep knocking what we can and have fun with the first one. Mentally we weren't there. I just think everyone was kind of down. I don't know why, but we have better spirits there, so I think it's all mental for him from here. We've done the work. We're good enough. It's just now knowing that we're good enough and knowing we're a seasoned team rather than coming in rookie year, so just knowing we got it. That fucking was hard, dude. Yeah. Um, do you have a towel? No. Can you have your shirt? No. No.
day one just wrapped up. Uh, final thoughts? Uh, I'm happy with it. It did what it needed to do. They were both very challenging for two different reasons, very different reasons. And uh, I'm excited to see who advanced. The right athletes definitely advanced. These were two very different balanced tests that I'm happy with. Uh, going into tomorrow, uh, any, uh, anything uh, that uh, concerns you or any um, reveals that uh, might be happening? No, now it's time. Now it's time to go to work. Now we're just down to the top 50, and it's going to go down from there. And it's just the best in the world. And it's just they got to step up because it's not going to get easier.